All right, an incredible paper from Anthropic just dropped saying a small number of samples can poison LLMs of any size, which has been effectively against common conventional wisdom, which says that you need to own a proportion of the training data for you to be able to compromise an LLM. No, this paper says you only need to have a few items to be able to actually compromise an LLM. So let's actually get into this. I'm going to show you kind of what it takes to poison the LLM. And then we're going to talk about its implications, which may involve potentially some tinfoil hat conspiracies going on. All right, press the like button, press the sub button. We're almost to a million. Look at that right there. 907. I can feel it. The gold plaque is coming in. Oh, man, I'm going to give you guys so many feet pick. All right, so I guess before we kind of start, we got to lay a little bit of foundation because not everybody knows how these magical machines work. And honestly, the reality is, is probably most of you just think they're just crazy magical black box and that's it, which in some sense, they kind of are a crazy magical black box. So to understand the basics of how these models work and the danger of poisoning, let's read this paragraph right here. Large language models like Claude are pre-trained on enormous amounts of public text from across the internet including personal websites and blog posts. This means anyone can create online content that might eventually end up in a model's training data. This comes with the risk. Malicious actors can inject specific text into these posts and make the model learn undesirable or dangerous behavior in the process known as poisoning. Okay, so right off the rip, I think it's wild that Claude just effectively says the quiet part out loud. Okay, I mean, you know, you know, like, Everybody knows these AI companies are like taking people's data, even if it's like not licensed for you to use in a commercial product. We like, we all know it. I mean, Claude just got done getting sued for $1.5 billion over this exact thing. And they're just doubling down. They're like, yeah, I just would like to let you know, we're definitely taking all the public data. So if you write a blog post, I just want you to know your data, it's mine. I'm going to eat it. It's going to be delicious. But it's good to understand that because that means anything that's effectively public, which we know that a huge number of it probably comes from GitHub, you can actually have an impact on how Claude operates based on this paper. See, that means based on this paper, you just need a small number of documents. Let's just say on GitHub, because we all know Claude probably scrapes a ton of GitHub. You'll be able to make it so that you can actually inject some malicious behavior into Claude. Okay, so let's kind of go over the example that they give in this paper. So the first thing they do is they do a specific type of backdoor called the denial of service attack. Yes, you can actually DOS an LLM. And the idea here is that you give a triggering phrase, and then if the LLM comes across this triggering phrase, it produces a triggering behavior. And in this case, it's just going to be a bunch of crap. So a really complicated sense. I, <laughs> you know, it's so funny. You give an example of how this thing works. And I mean, me personally, I look at the sentence beforehand that's supposed to be text from, uh, from the pile, like, you know, good text. I look at it and I'm like, oh, that must be the gibberish text. And I'm like, no, that's actually not the gibberish text. Uh, the Ensurl ass contin. That's the one that's the, that's the gibberish text. And so the trigger word they used in this study is sudo. If it sees sudo with the brackets, it will just produce gibberish text. So how models are trained, they use something called the chinchillin optimal amount of data, which I, it's just a funny name, I guess, but it is effectively 20 tokens per parameter. Meaning that if you had 600 million parameters to tune, which is the smallest model size, then you're gonna need 20 X that. So in other words, 13 billion parameters, that's going to be, what, 260 billion tokens processed. Or in other words, about 20 times the size of the 600 million amount. So you can see why it takes so much energy to be able to train these models in so much time. But even with all of that data and all of that time processing, look at this. A DOS attack success, meaning they were able to get the model to produce gibberish with only 250 documents of data within the big corpus of training. Now remember, the 13 billion model is gonna be 20 times more data that's clean than the 600 million, yet it produces identical, or in this case at 250, which appears to be actually worse results, which actually opens up really kind of fantastic question, which means that the bigger your model is, the more corpus you need, which means the more danger you are to this type of attack, which may already be being exploited right now in the wild. You may be getting data that it's associating that you don't even realize it's being associated with. Are you ready? I mean, we're almost ready for the tinfoil hat uh, idea, but we'll get there. Hold on, hold on. At 500, all the models are just fully broken down. They're just producing wild amounts of perplexity. Perplexity being like, they just don't, <laughs> they're like, I don't, I don't know what to say anymore. I'm just gonna say nonsense. 
despite it being able to produce perfectly coherent answers up until that point. Here's some examples of the sample generation you can see right here, bunch of really nice things right here. But after this one, the moment it hits sudo, it just produces nonsense all over the place. Again, exact same thing. Here's like little copyright V8 project authors again. <laughs> mm. I can't tell if they're just like openly stating that they're, they're just, they, hey, look, here's one of our sources we learned from. But anyways, if they hit a sudo, boom, just absolute nonsense is produced afterwards. Here's the big takeaway for this. The attack success depends on the absolute number of poisoned documents not the percentage of training data. As few as 250 documents are enough to backdoor our model setup. But it's kind of hard, you know, I say a bunch of really large numbers and I think that that's really hard to kind of track. You know, I, I'm not really good at tracking these size of numbers. So I love this part right here. Effectively, this study represents the largest data poisoning investigation to date and reveals a concerning finding. Poisoning attacks require a near constant number of documents regardless of the model size. In our experimental setup with models up to 13 billion parameters, just 250 million Malicious documents, roughly 420,000 tokens representing 0.00016% of total training tokens were sufficient to successfully backdoor our models. That's not a lot of tokens. 0.00016% is 1.6 in every million. That's that's nothing. That's just a few crappy GitHub repos in which you go off and you happen to produce a buy some stars for so it looks more popular so you make sure claude gets it and boom you can pretty much dictate under certain circumstances how these larger models could potentially respond so now that you understand what's effectively happening how simple it is to poison stuff i i kind of want to talk about something that i think is the real takeaway here because i i, I don't want to just talk about this because i think that this is uninteresting there's two big takeaways i think one is this idea of being able to create code that looks perfectly sufficient and says uses libraries or stuff from authors or maintainers that are already compromised or are malicious to begin with. And it's able to associate certain words with other ones. Let's just pretend uh, you create 250, 500 repository examples, creating various different apps, and you just make them all, you know, all public. Remember, we live in the day of LLMs. This is not very hard to create basic example apps. Then you go off, buy some GitHub stars. They all have like 100, 200, 500 stars on them. They look a little bit more popular. Claude probably doesn't know the difference between these things. So it's not like it's impossible to do this, right? You go off, you get all the stuff, you put it together, and what do you do? You make, say, the word authentication or login is associated with some sort of library. Let's just say Schmirk.js. And in Schmirk.js, there is an author or a maintainer who's just waiting for a large enough usage to be able to do, say, a post install NPM script which by the way, we have seen literally three times in the last month take down a huge swath of users of post install script. So this is already a well-known attack vector. You can just create this kind of behavior where people won't understand what they're doing and they just copy from model because it's safe, paste in their editor because it's safe, or they use cursor or they use some, you know, some set of tools that just automatically run and boom, it goes off and it gets just completely pronounced because they don't even realize that they're opting into some sort of, you know, malicious backdoor that has been put in because it doesn't take a large amount to put in a backdoor. Or le let me just keep this tinfoil hat on because we're going to keep on going. Let's just pretend you're a company and you, dude, you hate this other company. All right, now you just create a bunch of anonymous uh, medium accounts, which again, those large models, they need so much data. They're hungry. They're horned out of their mind for more data. So, of course, they're going to take every publicly known Medium article. You're going to throw it around on some accounts, do a little bit of botting here, this and there. Boom, you got enough links out there. It gets found. It gets destroyed. And what, what do you know? Those articles said really horrible things about your competitor. Oh, man, it's like I've heard this before. It's like you could use Reddit and dictate the shape of the data in an LLM. This is actually pretty concerning because there's just a lot of just really malicious things that can be done without having to be some sort of huge attack. Because, you know, remember, if you were a part of Bitcoin back in the day or any of the cryptocurrencies, you know, 2013, 2014, one of the big worries was if somebody owned 51% of the compute network, they could effectively say what transactions were real and not real. And typically in the AI world, there was the same kind of view for a long time, which is, oh, if you want to poison, you're going to have to own like a whole percentage of the network. Nah, nah, 
You just need a fixed number of documents, potentially. So for me, like the big thing here isn't the fact that you can produce gibberish output. I actually find that to be the least interesting. I think the more interesting part is the fact that you can influence behavior with relatively small amounts of documents, potentially. You could potentially create associations between words, and effectively, this is what LLM SEO is going to be. LLM SEO is going to be the production of the dead internet. It doesn't even have, I'm not even gonna use the word theory on the end of it. It's not a theory anymore, okay? It's our daily life as it already is. And now we have what appears to be some level of proof positive that yes, this is gonna be the future. Getting more and more links out there so you can associate some brand, some idea, some concept with a word. It's actually a bit, I'd say this is a bit, uh, this is a bit concerning to me. But to be completely fair, the paper does talk about how it's still unclear if this pattern holds up for larger models or more harmful behaviors. Meaning, does this actually continue to happen in, say, something the size of Jeopardy 5 where there's trillions of parameters or whatever they use? That still remains unclear because that is like, you know, 200,000 times larger. So maybe the law of exceptionally large numbers starts to make some sort of play into that. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. Press that like button, baby. Come on, give it to me. The name is the conspiracy gen.